as you can tell by the title, we're going to be building a minnow farm. Me and that guy right there. We're going to be mil building a minnow farm. Sorry, my camera lens just, or my screen just flipped around. So we're going to be building a minnow hatchery right back there. we got to update that plug, all that stuff. But we're going to do it way better than Flare and actually keep our minnows alive. Unlike Flare, it kills them all. But this is the reason we are making a minnow farm. It is for the fish that are in this pond. If this camera lens will focus in on them. They're right there. There is two large mouth, a bunch of bluegill. I want to add more fish and more rock. Finish that, finish the waterfall, all that kind of stuff. Um, there's obviously a build of this whole pond on my channel. If you guys want to go watch that, you can watch that. Um, I'm surprised there's still a school of minnows back there. Speaking of minnows, but those bass and bluegill eat way too many minnows. Um, so I put 10 dozen in here yesterday, and that tiny little school right there is all that's left. So, right back here, where I have these stakes, is going to be a five foot long by four foot wide, kind of like a raised garden bed, but it's going to be a minnow farm. And then I'm going to build it out of lumber. You know, build it out of lumber walls, put a liner in it, put sand, pea gravel, maybe a branch sticking in there, um, a pump. I'm going to pump water from in here into there and then pump the water out of there into that filter, which will go into the pond and kind of just create like an infinite loop so that when I go to take the minnows out and feed them to the fish, they're already acclimated, already used to the water, everything like that. Just scoop the minnows out, throw them in, call it a day. Um, what I would like to do with this thing, I don't know how I would do it, but you know how like minnow buckets have like that net you can just pull up and it pulls up, it's, you know, just pulls all the minnows right out of the water. You can just grab what minnows you want. I kind of want to do that with this, but that would be kind of hard to make a five foot by four foot net that you can pick up. Maybe like a two person job, you could pick it up and grab some minnows or just get like a dip net, dip them out. It's probably what I'll end up doing. Um, so yeah, we'll show you the lumber. The lumber that we got here is three four by fours. Um, because this one's six foot long, those two are five foot long, and I need three or four three foot sections. So we got some screws, different sizes. We need five eight foot two by fours, three ten foot two by fours, and one by fours and eight foot lengths. You're gonna need three of them. But that's for the top. I'm gonna make like a mesh top so that you don't have to worry about leaves and stuff falling in there in the fall and Craters getting in and stealing all your minnows. Um, I'm gonna get my, I will post the plans to this. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'll post the plans to this. Um, if you guys want to see exactly how I did it or what I'm doing with it or how I do it, what the dimensions are and all that stuff. But for now, I'm gonna get building because it's late and still gotta do a couple other things today. All right, today we're gonna be doing a little voiceover. Today's Video, obviously we're making the middle farm. Right now I'm cutting these beams at three foot six, six inches of ground clearance, you know, to keep it from rotting as easy from the bottom through, even though it's spray foamed. Um, and yeah, and then three foot of depth, roughly for the minnows. Uh, Gus, he's helping. Uh, uh, and then obviously Scoops, aka my father here, he is definitely helping. Um, Cause I am no builder or framer or whatever. And yeah, he knows what he's doing. So we're here squaring up some wood. Of course, I'm not running the show, but I am running the old drill. Uh, probably running my mouth a little bit too, but that's all right. Uh, everybody likes a little uh, zest, you should say. Um, yeah, we're just gonna screw these together, make sure they're all square and plumb. And I don't know why people do these voiceover things, but maybe it's interesting to some of you. Um, now we're going to take the walls, or the whole thing I guess, the framing, flip it down outside, do the same thing on these, and yeah, screw them together, buzz, 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 bang, bang, pound, pound, yeah, that looks good to me. Alright, so the framing is done. The inside of this is going to be three quarter inch marine grade plywood all the way around. Once we coat the whole thing in plywood, then we're going to have... The underlayment right there, under the liner, to protect it from any splinters or anything, any wooden splinters. 
And then the liner is going to get laid in there. And both the underlayment and the liner is going to get laid under here. And then this is going to get, well, the liner and the underlayment is going to get stapled down. And then this board here, it's like a trim, is going to get screwed down all the way around here to hold it down on all four sides to make sure there's no wrinkles that go back inside. Um, and then this, I'm going to take two more pieces of this and put chicken wire in between them and make like a top with a piano hinge. It goes right here so you can pick the whole top up and then uh, chicken wire is going to be covering it so that no so water can still go through it because there's going to be a pump with some PVC that pumps water in here. There's going to be two aerators which I have in the garage in there um, and then gravel and sand and maybe like take a branch and shove it like that so they can spawn around it and everything. Um, but the chicken fence is going to be so animals don't get in there. But I don't have time to cut any plywood before I go to work. So I'm going to go downstairs, look for an exterior paint, if we have any left over from anything. That's not like any specific color. Just something to coat all this non-treated wood. These 4x4s probably don't need to be painted, but I'll paint them. Because the whole outside is going to get covered in 8th um, inch plywood. And then I'm going to put insulation in between here so that in the winter time it doesn't freeze from all sides. It only freezes from the top down, which won't be a problem because I could probably just put a piece of foam on it and strap it down or something. Alright, here I am cutting some corners out on the 3 quarter inch plywood that I'm using. Probably a little overkill. You, you definitely can get away with like half inch plywood. Um, this is also marine grade. Uh, yeah, um, it's like five pliers or whatever. I don't know. It, my dad told me it's been some pretty strong stuff. I just chose some already sanded, smooth marine grade plywood because I mean, it, it's just going to be moisture city in there, I'm sure. So, yeah, I'm just notching out the corners here with my magical, uh, awesome Milwaukee jigsaw. If you use anything other than Milwaukee tools, you got soft hands. That's all I got to say. Um, yeah, now the box is uh, three quarters of the way done. Added some supports, as you can see there on the side, and what I'm doing right now, drawing out the holes for the support. Uh, so the bottom of the plywood can't kick out, even though I doubt it would, but still. Overkill building right here. Uh, that support, two supports in the floor also. Um, yeah, I don't know what else is there, there is to tell you. I don't know, don't, don't ask me what I'm doing here, but I'm doing something. Look at that, look at that. Don't ask me how straight those lines are cut because they are not straight. That straight, I should say. That straight. Jigsaw's a little hard. That is a, you know, I'm no European toy maker, but that leaf blower to get rid of the sawdust is a genius idea. Other than me right here thinking I cut it wrong, even though it's the same length. And I just learned how to put a board in a box after doing it three times. Yeah, I'm just going to screw it all in there. Oh, look, now I'm painting. Yes. Sadly, that golden retriever right there didn't get painted white. But he's a good boy. He stays out of the way. Anyway, just giving us some uh, cheap outdoor paint from Ace to uh, kind of seal the non... Just really the 2 by 4 is the only thing that needed to be painted here to seal it up. Um they're not treated everything else is treated the 4 by 4s were treated like 20 years ago because they've been in my yard forever and the plywood was obviously marine grade so yeah i did waste my time and paint every side of this thing inside and out top and bottom but i'm not going to bore you with a whole time lapse of that i'm just going to show you me painting this one side with my plumber's crack out um i'm gonna have to start charging for this content if i keep letting my crack hang out like that you know little only fans money here now we're on to some serious business here spray foam isn't that beautiful this is my soon to be brother-in-law here doing an awesome deed for the homeless and blind um, and spray painting spray painting spray foaming my minnow box 
middle farm box. I haven't quite got an idea what I'm going to call it. But if you need any spray foam done, this man is available at the email in the description below. He didn't even ask me to shout him out because he knows I'm not that big on YouTube. So, yeah, we just hand favors back and forth because that's what family does. But I'm going to give you some ASMR now and be quiet. Boom, spray foaming done. Now the trio is back. Gus is, um, yeah, watching the perimeter. Scoobs is cutting away some liner, and I'm in the box. Kicking the old sides around, folding the corners in where all the flaps are, trust me. It is hard to do this, and I don't know how you would do it without having any wrinkles. So yeah, there's a few wrinkles, and minnows do die in those wrinkles, sadly, but yeah, I will have to take it off and foam them or something. Boom. Still got a trim liner, but for now, this is how she looks. Got the liner down in it with no underlayment underneath because that would have been a pain. A few wrinkles, but they should straighten out when the water's on it. I'm not too worried about it. Um, but yeah, it looks good. All lined up. We're going to put the four 1x4s on top now and then cut right under the 1x4s and then I'll sheet every single side of it and make the lid um, and then it'll be good to fill up with water I just got attacked by a stink bug alright I could have just left a crusty spray foam but instead I went out balled out on some eighth inch plywood and some stain to match the fence color look at that all waterproof stained both sides probably didn't need to but I did like I said building this thing overkill Duh, don't look at that corner now that that's out of the way, we're going to look at this me cleaning rocks to go in it. Actually, these ones went in the pond to bury the aerator line, but I didn't show that. Yes, the water was very cold. It was like a whole 52 degrees or something like that, or 55. I don't know. My thermometer's in Celsius, so I have to convert it back over. And I, I never know. I don't never remember it. Uh, yeah, that's tarps there to catch the little rocks to fall through. Here's a couple days later. Running the pump, air raider, drilled some holes in the side, little rock for the pump to sit on. I put rocks against the far wall to keep the current uh, so the minnows don't die. And yeah, half sand, half gravel. And this is the other pond pump. And this is the outlet that my buddy Dominic replaced for me. Shout out to him for doing uh, such great work there. It looks amazing. As you can see, we made it to the uh, hatchery. There is ponds everywhere. Alright, got home from the hatchery, had to take the neighbor to get her car. Didn't film anything inside the hatchery because everything was outside. It was kind of a slow season in between them having minnows and not having minnows. Or any fish for that sort. They had bass, crappie, bluegill. I was like, everybody's always seen those. And they had a few trout. Perch were coming next week along with walleye. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll be back in the future to grab some fish if I ever have a property in a pond, which may be coming soon. Who knows? But here I am, let, it, let the fish acclimate while I was uh, there. Took one out, fed it to the big fish, took another one out that was dead. I lost three on the ride home. I also forgot to... F Never mind. I did flip the clip over, but man, look at that. That is two gallons of minnows. Each gallon holds 2,000 minnows. That is 4,000 minnows in a 300-gallon box. Let me tell you, I took about half of those out and put them in the big pond because there was way too many minnows. Yeah, so I took about half of those out, put them in the big pond because my filter could not keep up, and I don't think my aerator would have kept up. Um, these minnows were, there's so many. But they were so cheap, so you already know I had to buy like 10 times more than I needed. And yeah, there's Gus dropping his tennis ball in. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.